Hey, I'm Jake Lizio, and in this video, we're gonna explore major seventh chords, minor seventh chords, and dominant seventh chords. What are they, how do we build them, and more importantly, how do we use them? How do we stay in a key or a modal tonality with them, and how can we use them without staying in a key? So basically just writing with these chords, trying to get a little bit better grasp of them. Now this isn't really heavy duty music theory, but you might get lost if you're not familiar with the concept of scale degrees or the diatonic chords of your major scale. So I really recommend you check out those videos. I've linked to them in the description, and they should make this video make a lot more sense if you don't already know those concepts. So let's get started by talking about minor seventh chords. Minor seventh chords are just minor chords, but you've added a flatted seventh. So what is a flatted seventh? Well, if you're in the key of A, you just count up seven notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then flat that note, take it down a half step. And when I do that, I end up on the note G. So in A, a flat seven is the note G. And I find it kind of uncomfortable to count up seven notes and then count back one fret. So here's my shortcut. If you need to find a flat seven, just start on your root and go back two frets or go back a whole step. I started on A and if I go back a whole step, it takes me to G. That's a flat seven if I just lift it up an octave. So that's my shortcut of finding flat sevens. We're going to be using that again when we want to figure out the dominant seventh chord because a dominant seventh chord also includes a flat seven. So long story short, if I want to make an A minor seven, I take an A minor chord which is the notes A, C, and E, and I have to add that G in there somewhere. The shape that I like to use as a guitar player, though, more than anything else, is this shape right here. I put my middle finger on my root on the sixth string, and then with my ring finger, I play these notes. This is the flat seven, this is the minor third, and this is the perfect fifth. So these four notes here spell out the notes of an A minor seven. And this is a movable shape. I can just kind of move it around here on my guitar to get a B minor seven, C minor seven. And hopefully you hear minor seventh chords are like very chilled out. They're very relaxed versions of minor chords. An A minor can be pretty harsh. Take a listen. That's got a little bit of bite to it, right? That's got a little bit of a, I don't know, a little evil, but a minor seventh really is not evil. Minor seventh's much more subdued. I feel like it's a diluted version of your minor chord, right? You've watered it down a little bit and it's taken away some of the bite. And even in any version, inversion, here's an open A minor chord, really dark, really heavy. Here's an A minor seven. And in my opinion, that's much more light. That's much more um, watered down. So the first way you can start using minor seventh chords is just by keeping in mind that they are less dramatic than your normal minor chords. If you're writing a song and you have to have a minor chord in there, but you think, you know, that's just too heavy. It's got too much emotion behind it. Try just turning it into a minor seventh chord. You might find out that that really just chills it out enough where it's not so, you know, over the top. It's a little bit more acceptable. But here's the deal. If I'm in a key, let's say I'm in the key of C major, right? There's seven chords in the key a C major. I get a C major, a D minor, an E minor, an F, a G, an A minor, and a B half diminished, and then back to a C major. So all of these minor chords, my two chord, my three chord, and my six chord, I don't care what key I'm in. I can always turn my two, my three, and my six into a minor seventh chord, and it'll keep me in the key. So check it out. What was my two chord? My two chord was a D minor, right? If instead I decide to make it a D minor seven by adding in the flat seven, well, what is a flat seven in the key of D? Here's a D. My shortcut is just go back two frets, go back a whole step. That's a C. So now I have a D minor triad, which is the notes D, F, and A, and I've added in a C. By adding in the C, well, C is already in the key of C. The note C is already in there, so it's not like I've left the key by making this a minor seventh chord. Same thing if I go to my three chord. My three chord is supposed to be E minor, but I can make it an E minor seven, add in the D, which is a flat seven, and D is still in the key. So by making all these chords, my sixth chord, for example, that sixth chord is A minor, right? And I can make it an A minor seven by adding a G, and that note G is already in my key of C. So this is really nice because I'm adding in notes to my chords, I'm making my chords more colorful, giving them more interest, more variety these chords, but I'm not leaving the key at all. So I don't have to worry about accommodating this with a weird scale or figuring out you know, how to modulate or anything like that. It's really basic stuff. Just being able to now include minor sevens as part of my progressions. So at a very basic level, let's say you were writing a simple chord progression that was just like your one chord to your three chord to your two chord, and then to your five chord, all right? Pretty basic stuff, right? But I can start taking all those minor chords and I can substitute them for minor seven. So this E minor will be an E minor seven. This D minor will be a D minor seven. And then I can come back to a regular G, right? So hopefully you hear that secondary version of that progression. Here it is with just minor chords. And here it is substituting those for minor seventh chords. Thank you. 
it might sound a little jazzier to you. A lot of people hear minor seventh chords and they think of jazz. Major seventh chords reminds them of jazz. And I do agree. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of those chords in jazz, but jazz goes way past just these minor sevenths and major sevenths. But it does get you into that realm. It gives you more into that lounge territory as opposed to the rock and roll territory. So hopefully you get how easy that is. If you know your diatonic formula, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can replace the two, the three, and the six with minor seventh chords and you're golden. You don't have to worry about anything. So now let's move on to major seventh chords. Major seventh chords are when you take a major triad and you add an actual seventh, not a flatted seventh. So let's take a look at the uh, the chord C major, right? C major is just a one, three, five. It's a root, a third, and a fifth. And if I want to find the real seventh, I can go up seven notes on my scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the note B. So if I play a C major triad, C, E, G, and if I add a B, then I get a C major seven chord. It's a major triad with a natural seven. Now, once again, I hate counting up seven notes. That can be a pain. So I just like to go back a half step. If I'm starting on the note C, go back a fret. It takes you to the note B. That's your seventh. Just move it up an octave instead. So that's a really easy shortcut. If I want to figure out an A major seven chord, right? Here's an A. Go back a half step. Takes you to the note G sharp. That's the note you'll have to add to your A to get an A major seven chord. Now, to play major seventh chords as a movable shape, what I like to do is put my first finger on the root, like here's A, and then I like to play the major seventh with my ring finger, and then my major third with my pinky underneath it, and then finally the fifth with my middle finger, and I get this shape, kind of a weird shape, but movable, and it gives me all the notes of my major seven chord right next to each other, and a nice little easy shape to play. It's a kind of a jazz voicing. And you might start getting that jazzy flavor out of it again. To me, major seventh chords are pretty stinking jazzy, and just on their own, if you just play a major seven, to me, that's got a very, very jazzy lounge style feel to it. They kind of feel a little cheesy to me if you don't really work with them enough. Um, I feel like they can be really beautiful and really, uh, really glorious chords, really relaxing and really, you know, warm chords. Um, but they can get really cheesy if you put them in the wrong spot. So, you know, be a little careful with them. Just be aware of the cheese factor when you do something like a, a major seven chord. But if you do want to use these chords in the key, it's as simple as substituting them in for your one chord or substituting them in for your four chord. I can play a major seventh chord off the root, and it keeps me in the key because that note B is already in the key. Also, if I go to my four chord, which is F, I could make this an F major seven, and the note I'm adding in is in key. That's the note E. So I want you to remember that if you're in any key, I don't care what key you're in, you can take your one chord and make it a major seven chord. You can take your four chord and make it a major seven chord, and you're going to Stay in key without having to worry about anything. So just a second ago, remember I played that chord progression? It went one, three, two, five. Let's do that same thing. We'll just substitute our one in now with a major seventh chord. So we've got one as C major seven. We've got our three chord as E minor seven. We've got our two as D minor seven. And then finally, we're going to go to our five chord for G major. If I did those in different voicings, maybe finger pick it instead, I'll have a C major seven like this and then an E minor seven. I'll go down to D minor seven, and then G major, just like this. And hopefully you can hear, that sounds a little bit more colorful than my initial chord progression. It's got a lot more interest going on there. Now let's talk about dominant seventh chords. A dominant seventh chord is simply a major triad, but you've added in a flatted seventh. So let's go back to our example in A, right? In A, we played an A major triad and we added a G sharp because that was a half step behind it. Now we have to play an A major triad and add in a G. So you know an A chord looks like this. Well, if you just smack a G in there, you get an A7, an A dominant seven. A lot of times we don't say the word dominant, we just call it an A7. And this is where a lot of people get confused. A7 is different than A major seven. They're both major triads, but the major seventh chord actually includes the major seventh note. And the dominant seventh chord includes the flatted seventh note. So that was the thing that really got me. I always confused those two, and I couldn't figure out why they were different chords when they seem to have the same name. It's really not. Major seventh includes the major seventh, dominant seventh, or seventh just includes that flatted seventh. Now the dominant seventh chord is in key when you build it off of the five chord. So in the key of C major, my five chord is G. And if I make it a G7, and the shape that I use is just my normal bar chord shape, but without my pinky, and that gives me a seventh chord like that, I can move that around. And this is the dominant chord in the key of C. This five chord with a dominant seventh played off of it is called the dominant chord. And we've made it a dominant seventh, and it takes us back very well to our tonic. It takes us back to the one chord very strongly. So there's really only one place you can play seventh chords and stay in key. 
that is off the five position. And that seems kind of limiting, right? You'd think that seventh chords are so popular, we should see them all over the place. Well, we do see them all over the place, but most of the time when you see them, they're actually out of key. They're including a note that's not in the key. And you can understand this concept further by studying my video on secondary dominance, where we're using seventh chords all over the place, but they're taking us back to our chords in our key. So really, here's what it comes down to. You need to memorize that your two chord, your three chord, and your six chord, those are all the minor chords, those can all become minor sevenths and you'll stay in key. You also want to memorize that your one chord and your four chord can become major seventh chords, and that will keep you in key. And your five chord could become a dominant seventh chord, and that will also keep you in key. Memorizing that helps you compose with more interesting chord progressions in any mode of major. And here's what I mean. We know that C major is the same thing as A minor. So if I want to compose in the key of A minor, I can still use all these cool extended chords that we just figured out. All I have to do is just focus on the A minor chord. So let's do some actual writing here with this basic concept. I want to write in A minor, and uh, I want to use some extended chords. I don't want to use just major and minor. I want to use some of these minor sevenths and major sevenths. So let's start on our A minor chord, and let's sub it in for our minor seventh. That gives me my A minor 7. Let's go to the D minor chord, and instead of just making it minor, we'll make it minor 7. And then let's go to uh, the F, and the F can become an F major 7. I'm thinking of this as my 6 chord because I'm thinking I'm in the key of A minor, so this is like my flat 6 chord. And then finally, let's go to that G chord, but we're going to make it a G7 instead. Give it a little tension to come back to A minor 7. And instead of playing it in open position, let's play it with some bar chord shapes. Here's an A minor 7. Here's a D minor 7. Here's an F major 7. And a G7. All right, so what I'm going to do is put this together into a whole jam. And what I started off doing is recording just the guitar part first with this really simple rhythm. And I knew eventually I was going to add a shaker. So I started off with this really simple pattern. And then I added a little delay to give it a little bit more movement. After that, I programmed in the following drum beat, keeping the snare on two and four for a steady backbeat, and having the kick play a simple repeating pattern. Next, I wrote a bass line, which normally I would do on my bass guitar, but I'm trying to spend more time on my MIDI controller, so I grabbed the subtractor synthesizer and stayed on the preset patch, which is already a bass. And then I wrote the following line. A minor 7 chord, I just outline some chord tones going up and down, and then finally land on a D to emphasize the D minor 7 chord. However, from there, I just walk up the scale in order to get to our next note, F. Once I'm there, I do the exact same chord tone outlining as before with the same rhythm, and then I end up on the note G to support that last chord. But instead of walking up the scale from here to go back to A, I only went up a half step to get to our natural seventh to help pull us strongly back to our root. After that, I figured the song could use some layers, so I started off with this Rhodes keyboard that just plays whole notes on each chord. And then I did these little dyads on a reverby synthesizer to add a little more interest without getting in the way. And then lastly, I wrote this simple groove and played around with it on a saz patch until I could get a percussive clavichord-like sound. So the groove turned out really well with all those different layers, and from there it was just a matter of playing around with the A minor scale on top, adding in a little bit of chromatic notes for interest to get like a nice little jam section going. Eventually I fell into like a little melodic pattern, so after I recorded this I doubled that melodic pattern with another synthesizer to kind of make it seem like a really prominent part of the song. So here's what it sounds like all together.
So that's just four little chords on a loop, and I could jam all day over that without getting bored. I think it sounds really good. I think it sounds really interesting for four little chords. And what helps it sound so interesting is that it's not just major and minor. Major and minor triads can get a little bland, but as soon as you start extending them, as soon as you start adding in those sevenths, things become a little bit more interesting. There's a little bit more depth to your chord progression, a little bit more to explore. Now, I definitely want to mention you don't have to stay in keys. That's not a requirement. And especially with these extended chords, it's fun to just think about how it fits in outside of keys instead. So I like to think of minor seventh chords as just substitutes for minor. I don't care if the minor seventh chord is in the key or not. Just experiment with using them to help take away the bite of a minor chord. Um, but most of the time, because of the way our scales work out, most of the time when you play a minor seven, it's not going to disturb uh, your key. Very rarely are you going to be including a note that's outside of your key when you do a minor seventh chord. For major seventh chords, though, I really do get a lot of fun on stringing together random major seventh chords out of key. This is very similar to the God chord concept I talked about. If you just throw together God chords that are totally out of key and make them all major seven, it sounds pretty awesome. So like here's a C major seven, let's move it up a minor third, E flat major seven. I love that change. And there's no scale that really accommodates both of those. Or even just going down a half step. Here's a C major seven, and then down a half step to a B major seven. I like that kind of dreamy lullaby change. Now, a fun little thing you can do with dominant seventh chords is just play them off of every note of your pentatonic minor scale. So you guitar players probably know A pentatonic as being A, C, D, E, G. Well, play a dominant seventh chord off of each of those notes. A7, C7, D7, E7, G7. And if you add up all the notes I just played there, there's no way it fits into one key signature. But you can rock out on those chords all day long. And even though it ends up being a mess of, of chromatic notes all through there, it still works really well for the blues. That's the whole idea for the blues. It doesn't fit into a key nice and well. The blues is all about the clashing of those thirds and the dissonance that occurs between there. So a fun way to use dominant seventh chords is to just literally kind of slide them around, stick to that pentatonic framework, and you're going to get some really good blues progressions coming out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something. If you did like this video, you can thank my Patreon supporters for making it possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.